We need to talk about our relationship. No, not our relationship, but the relationship that you are going to develop with your frame reps. This week, we have an amazing interview with, well, a frame rep, where we cover topics like working with your frame rep, managing your frame board, how to be successful selling eyewear, and so much more. One quick note before we get started, we did have an audio hiccup or two during this, sorry, new mic system. So in a few places, the sound quality just isn't that great. Sorry about that. Let's get to the interview. And welcome to the Laramie K Optician Works Training Store, where today we have got a special guest. This is Jackie Koneman. Is that right? Yes. yes. All right, Jackie Koneman. She is a frame rep with Brillin Eyes. Jackie, why don't you tell the folks at home a little bit about yourself? Hi, um, I am born and raised in the Netherlands. I've been in America for about 30 years and have been uh, a licensed optician in Virginia. And I have been with Brillin Eyes for the last three years. My territory is... Um, Virginia, Maryland, Washington DC, and North and South Carolina, a little bit in Tennessee even. And I love uh, meeting with my clients and educating them about European eyewear. Turns out that Jackie and I have some things in common. We both came out of the Reynolds program. We both lived in the Richmond, Williamsburg, Virginia area. We're both of Dutch ancestry. Why did we bring Jackie here? Well, as always, we're looking to connect you with experts at what they do. All right, Jackie, um, if I was brand new, just literally started working at this place today, and this is all we had, we're just starting to expand our business, we're buying up stuff, we don't even have the door open yet, right? we're going to open next month. You brought your bags here. Your job is to sell me frames that I'm going to put on my board and then sell to my customers. What would you want to convey to me as a newbie optician, as a new owner, as somebody who's responsible for the frame boards? What are kind of the first things that come to mind? The first thing that comes to mind is you want to have available what your client base is going to be. That's very important. Who do you want to sell your frames to? The other thing which is important, otherwise you won't be successful, is you have to like the frames you're selling. You have to be excited about those frames. Uh, it's important that you actually wear the frames yourself, everybody else in the staff as well. Um, so you want to be that person who goes out to the supermarket wearing some funky frames and people saying, oh, where did you get those frames? Mm -hmm. Well, matter of fact, here's my business card. That's really important. Now, to manage your board, first of all, have in mind who you want to sell to. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing which is very important is don't be like anybody else. If I can find those frames next door or at a big box store, um, you're not going to be successful. What would you say the average number of frames on a board is, roughly? I mean, if you took your busiest place and your small eclectic little place? Um, I don't want to go to about 800, 1200. Eight, eight to 1200, okay, yeah. wow. Um, so we have a little way to go. Yeah, here. yeah, we got <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tell me how I don't get stuck with $25,000 worth of stuff. You want to listen to your um, sales rep. I mean, we are having a partnership. Uh, and it doesn't do me any good if I have your stuff hanging on your wall and it doesn't sell true. That can have work for me once and then I'm stuck. Uh, so when you are successful, I am successful. Um, so we know what sells. We know what sells in other places. Um, so have me come over often so we can take a look at it. We can refresh it if it needs to. Maybe we started off on the wrong foot. We don't know, but we can correct that. All these things are correctable. 
what you don't want to do is just say nothing and then after four months I come back it's like well your, your stuff doesn't sell hmm. <laughs> that's that's well, not helping anyone yes so a, let's have an open open yes. and honest relationship yeah yeah, yeah. learn a website if something sells right away obviously you want to replace it right away yeah, that was that was actually one of my, my questions on here. I go I had a rep that used to come to this school. It was wonderful. It was um, the Clear Vision rep. He, you know, it's like you handled multiple lines under the Clear Vision umbrella. One rep for one company selling multiple things, and he was just really really great with the students. Bill, if you're out there, thanks. And he, his his favorite saying was, you know, if it sold once, it'll sell again. So you know, always yes. you know, just order order that frame again. I uh, couldn't agree with that more. I, I, so you know, relationship is what I'm hearing, very, very important. Uh, you're in the, the the nethered regions of your territory at this point, kind of a long way from home. How often do you circle through someplace like you know, like Greenville? Um, every four months, okay. yes, mm -hmm. or three times a year. Mm -hmm. That is also when we get new product. No. So I schedule my uh, appointment so that everything you see will be new. Um, we get new products all the time, very boutique -ish. things retire as well, so everything stays fresh all the time and we stay up with the latest uh, trends. I always push people towards what I call um, rep management of the boards. I, th I think that's what I'm hearing from you, uh, if that's correct or not. Uh, some people believe that, you know, they'll they'll buy up stock and they'll take care of maintaining the inventory and seeing what sells and what doesn't and making those decisions on what sells and what's good. And in my personal experience and understanding and feedback from people, that usually doesn't work out very well because you end up getting stuck with stuff that you can't return. You're not swapping it out with the rep. You're losing that relationship and all of a sudden you're stuck with 30, 100, 200 pieces of stuff that hasn't sold and you can't return it. Um, so you've just lost $10,000, $20,000. Um, do you agree with that model that it's kind of your responsibility to manage the board, maybe perhaps more than the optician? I think it's a partnership. Okay. Definitely. It's a partnership. Um, I like accounts where I go in and I recommend this, This, you know, either returns are expensive too, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. We'll, you we'll have, talk about yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I like places, and we'll talk about it later, where mm -hmm. you say, well, you know, this either price it down or put it mm -hmm. in a special place or put an incentive for, for your staff to sell it or return it. Um, this just came out. This is new. This is fresh. Let's go with that. Mm -hmm. um, I have a few places where I just go in, do my thing on the board mm -hmm. and talk to the staff. You know, are you needing anything? Mm -hmm. uh, do you want more men's frames? Do you want more kids frames? You know, mm -hmm. so it's always a relationship. Uh, I don't just sneak in there, do my thing <laughs> and sneak out. It's, it's always an, an open relationship. Mm -hmm. But we usually know what sells. We know what's successful in other places. So uh, it, it's yeah. not a bad idea. We were just talking a little bit about credits, returns, uh, again, that, that money piece. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about that? What, you, you know, as part of what, what does a return mean? What does a trade mean? Okay, so the industry, the trading out, and it's something which is actually unique to America. Other countries don't do that. I didn't it's know that. Like, <laughs> yeah, if you pair, you know, if you buy, you know, uh, pairs of jeans, then you know, you sell those pairs of jeans. You don't go back to your clothing retailer saying, "Hey, those jeans didn't sell," so you get them back. It doesn't really work like that. But in America it does, so let's talk about it. Uh, my company has a policy of two for one, so that means if you return one piece, um, you buy two new ones. Um, other companies, I think it's something like one, one for seven, so you have to buy seven new ones in order to return one old one. Um, I think it even goes up for that. One for one exchanges, um, they don't exist that much of anymore. Really? Uh, um, and they're not very usual. I mean, you should have sold some of those, right? Yeah. So um, you don't see that, that much anymore. Talking about exchanges. Yeah. So you get a return authorization from your rep and then you have to go with this return authorization. You have to get the frames off your boards. You have to clean them. You have to take them off. You have to wrap them up, you have to find a label, the whole thing, um, mail them out. All this takes time mm -hmm. away from you actually doing your job, which is selling eyewear. Uh, so that's kind of a race there. And then you have to post this as well, back and forward, both ways. Mm -hmm. So um, yes, uh, exchanges cost money. Perfect segue back to the relationship. And I talk about this on the website. Your frame reps 
know everybody in your area. They know all the gossip. They know who's hot and who is not. If you're looking for help, they might be a really good source. And you just talked about those other people looking for that frame that's been discontinued or something. They're a bridge between you and other stores as well. You have a frame, kind of the end of its life, but the customer doesn't want to replace the lenses. You're missing a piece. Something's broken. They might be able to track down that five-year-old frame for you. They may even know or have it in their car. <laughs> it happens sometimes. Um, so don't ever overlook that. Again, why it's so important to develop a good relationship with the frame wrap. Why don't you tell people what makes you happy? What makes a good frame wrap relationship? I mean, how do you want to be treated? With um, actually, all my all my uh, clients are very, very nice and uh, professional. Um, the most important thing is to remember that I travel long ways. Yeah. I'm all the way from Williamsburg, Virginia, so close to Richmond. Yeah. Uh, we're in South Carolina right here. So um, before anything, uh, I see you, I already have gas in my car, I already have a hotel uh, night or more. Uh, so that's all calculated in. So. Yeah. Don't be that person like, oh, I forgot you're coming. Sorry. Yeah, we don't really need anything right now. Um, just take inventory. Um, it's not helpful for either one of us. Uh, people will cold call. That's part of our job. Uh, we will not have a job if we didn't do that. Uh, because our alternative would be calling you on the phone and that's the yeah, last no, phone call yeah, you're going to yeah, pay yeah, any yeah, attention yeah. with. So um, if somebody comes in with some teaser trays to show you a new product, Take a look at it. You might like it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if not, then that's fine too. Yeah. That's fine too. And then just say, we are not interested. Yeah. And, and for you new folks, what she's saying is you're going to be in the middle of doing all kinds of stuff and the store's going to be busy and the phone's going to be ringing and you've got a job to enter and the customer just walked in the door and it's almost lunchtime and your workmate just left and who comes in through the front door? Jackie with three trays, not her full bags, which we'll show you in a couple of minutes. And all she wants to do is to say, hey, I'm from Berlin Eyes. This is the beautiful stuff we carry. I'd like to come back next time I'm coming through your territory. Here's my card. Be nice, folks. Take that minute and a half that it's going to take you. Say thank you. You know, busy at the moment, but wow, yeah, that is actually pretty nice stuff. Grab a card and follow up. Let's talk just a tiny bit about inventory. Now, this was a, a second note I had for myself. I also had frame wraps that always pushed, well, if you like this, um, get it in all three sizes and all three colors. Do you agree with that? Uh, well, three sizes, no, because we have <laughs> only one size <laughs> well, in three colors. Yeah. I do believe, uh, and I think this is important, and it will help you better, that to go deep into a collection. And with going deep into a collection, and that just makes a really good impression, and then it tells much more the story of the brand. I think also it's important that you put your, this is again, this is something you only do in America and Europe, everything is unisex, uh, because who are you to decide? <laughs> You know, we're getting there. We're, yeah. we're, we're definitely yes, reaching, yeah. reaching that. Um, so put your brands by brands. Put your men, women, children, put it all together with some nice POP there. And um, this is where you can show your people. And it will just look much better than having, you know, I know that people sort things by material or oh, by, uh, <laughs> I've even seen color, which is oh, even oh. more, uh, <laughs> you can never find anything there. No, no, just yeah, keep it very yeah. simple, sorted by distributor or by brand even better. Yeah. And that tells more the story of the brand. And then people mm -hmm. can go like, wow, this is really funky. I'm not a daring, but the one next to it is still that brand and I can go with that and that, that works for me. Yeah. And it's another piece of the relationship too. It does help you out if your brands are, are kind of consolidated with each other. It's a little easier for you to run that. Oh, it's than much easier than them. Yes. Uh, yeah, men's, women's, children's, sons. You know, now they have four places they have to look for their particular frame lines. Uh, if you grow it by branding or sub-brand even, at least it's a little easier on the reps. If you are opening a store, if you are the optician is as part of an opening or it is your store, you're running a business. As you know that, that's, that's what you are. You're a business person. You're not in healthcare, for crying out loud. You're in business. It's about money. 
You always have to be looking for the best deal, either for yourself or for your employer. Um, if you came to me this first time and I've done a couple of store openings, I would be talking to you about buy-in. So tell Absolutely. me about what that is. And I would be talking about billing cycles on something like a 306090. Um, tell us a little bit about those two concepts, if you would. Um, so we um, at Brill and Ice, we do not require a set amount of buy-ins. We, wow. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, I don't, I'm not telling you, okay, buy five of this and five of this and five of this and five of this and think you're going to be successful. You will not be. But um, I think it's still up to the customer to decide, you know, how many they're going to buy. So we're very flexible with it. Mm -hmm. The only exception is our, our higher end brand, which is Reykjavik Ice Black mm -hmm. Label. And the buy-in is very small for that. Yeah. But we don't require a certain amount of buy-ins. Mm -hmm. However, as I told you earlier, going deep into one brand is is a smart thing to do right. going back to how many colors yeah um i think two colors at least okay because it tells you that you have confidence in this particular frame mm. yeah. and it looks better yeah. and then there's a third there's a third color you can look online for that if it or you know hopefully one of your right. staff members is wearing <laughs> it on their face even better <laughs> we need to touch that again too um I'm not sure we were 100% clear there. Um, Buy-in means that a lot of companies will say, well, before you can have the, the Gorbot 7 line, you have to buy a dozen pieces of that line. You know, you, you can't buy two and start putting up your POP and saying you handle the Ella and Max collection. Right? This company lets you do that, but a lot of companies will not let you do that. In order to say you're an Ella and Max dealer, well, you have to have a whole lot of their product. Which is a good time to talk about um, um, board buyout kinds of stuff. Um, you know, everything to the rep is is board space. Like going to the grocery store, and you know, the Frito Lay's got a section, and then the Lay's people have a section. Um, it's kind of the same idea, right? And it's all about board space. This is a finite amount of room that we have up here. Everybody's fighting for that space. So their job, of course, if I insist that you do a high buy-in, and I'm going to have more of my product up on your board. The other thing is that they may come in and offer to buy out. a row out. <laughs> right. Talk a little bit about that and whether you like that idea or not. So you got the buy-ins, which is the, the frames you buy, and then the buy-outs is I come in and say, listen, you have this sitting there. It hasn't moved very well. Maybe your relationship with your rep soured. Maybe your rep just disappeared completely. It happens. And <laughs> unfortunately, uh, maybe it, it hasn't sold um, and it's just not it's not comfortable for you. And you're kind of sick of looking at it, basically. Um, what I can do is I can come in, I can take those frames off your hands and I can get you a set amount of discount to replace it with our frames. Usually the discounts between 20 or 30 percent. So that is when you're starting out a great way to get started. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful way to get started because you would save a lot of money. Mm -hmm. The frames I take, uh, they usually go to a charity in Richmond, Conexus. Oh, nice. And um, you are required to keep that particular amount of frames on your board. And that's that's. That's just to be fair. Mm -hmm. And everything you um, replace, obviously, is going to be the regular price. So the 30% or 20% or whatever you decide with your rep, discount only works the first time. Do you do any kinds of deals, 30, 60, 90? Do you know what that means? Yes, yeah, okay. yes. Um, most companies do. So if you buy 100 frames, we do a 30, 60, 90. And that means 30 days, you know, one third of the bill is due, 60 days, you know, the, the other one third is due and then, um, you know, 90 days. Really super important thing to ask for. Um, so, you know, always look for the best deal possible. If the reps come in and say, hey, you know, I've got these closeouts or something, always worth listening and looking, which brings me to one other point. Um, the complete side note here, part of dealing with reps and Jackie, we don't, won't talk, you're not here for a moment. Guys, you need to learn how to say no, okay? Uh, especially when you're new, it's razzle-dazzle and it's beautiful and it's cool and you're spending money and you've got the rep here. You need to learn how to say no to folks as well. So be prepared to do that. Um, all right, so you come in and you buy out two of my rows here. 
and you put up your brand. Let's talk a little bit about the difference between, and it's gonna sound weird, brand and brand. Can you? Yes. Okay. So <laughs> one brand is licensing. That is like, for example, Kate Spade. That's just a name. Uh, a name they have the license to, to put on their product and well, it's, you know, the evil empire who, who does <laughs> this. Uh, it's the same with like, um, Walt Disney, for example, you have clothing with like Mickey Mouse on it. It's the same thing. It just means they have the licensing rights for this particular name. Um, a brand is different. They only make eyewear. For example, Ella and Max, they only make eyewear. That's a brand, that's an eyewear brand in my mind. The mm -hmm. other one is a licensing, and you have to know the difference. The other important piece of that is the licensed brand, the big, big names, right? We don't need to go into them. Clothing, shoes, handbags, everybody's got that stuff, right? The, the big companies buy the rights to use those names, jack up the price on stuff, and it's everywhere, right? The, the mall across the street has got those brand name stores and you've got the brand name. So does the place on the corner. So does the place across the street. So does the place next to the mall. Whereas you get into these more unique pieces, the eyewear brands that make nothing but eyewear, you're setting yourself apart. You have a special thing that people come back for. It's a unique thing you're trying to build. All right, speaking of, P.O.P. or Point of Purchase Merchandise and stuff. Uh, you brought some with you. I had a couple of moto pieces up here as well. Um, you talked about the importance of being a part of that. You said, you, you, uh, Jackie said you'd actually come into a store and help me if I you wanted to help me design this. Um, if you would talk a little bit about do's and don'ts in general, if you were starting a store, I mean, do you approve of what I've done here? <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, real quick, this kind of one was a yes or no. Do you agree with folks that you should have some color on the board, regardless of whether those pieces sell or not? Yes, and All I right. yes, <laughs> yes, and I actually um, like what I'm wearing right now. Actually, this sells really good. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I have a few pieces, and I put them on the board, and I say, I know this is not going to sell, mm -hmm. uh, but that's fine. Next time I come back, I'll, I'll take them back. We'll exchange them for something else, but it will draw people to that board. Mm -hmm. They might not get that one, but they might get the one next to it. Uh, another very big don't is don't put things under glass or behind glass or under lock. Um, I know with COVID time, you don't want people to touch things, but it is important that people have access to it. What they will try on, what they see, what is easy accessible, they will yeah. gravitate to. If it's behind glass, it is just going to sit there. Yeah. That's the biggest don't. Don't put things behind glass. It, 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 it will kill it. it it's not hmm. going to be going. Go. If you want to talk to folks just a little tiny bit on the importance of kind of being up on the latest trends and fashions and maybe where you learn that stuff. And maybe we even talked about you talked about trunk shows and I think we, we talked over it or, or, or it got stepped on somewhere along the line. So trunk shows and just plain being a little fashion aware maybe, especially for you guys. <laughs> um, trunk shows are super easy and let's talk about also educating staff while, while we're talking about that and then wearing and I'll wearing throw, throw that yes. in there too yes. so we have all kinds yes. of yes yes so um if you get a new brand in your store and the staff doesn't know what it's about they don't see what what's so different about this particular brand than this particular brand they all look alike hmm. uh, you're not setting yourself up for success Every rep will be more than happy to do a staff um, training, leave things behind in writing, just bullet points about your brand, um, show up at uh, a staff meeting mm -hmm. and just do a little bit about the brand. Um, or what we also have is we have a brand am ambassador in uh, larger stores where there's more than one employee, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, there was one person who we sit with almost um, on a monthly basis, wow. and they get special information from us, like, hey, this new line came out. Nice touch. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. and that person becomes more responsible, like, to keep everybody else updated mm -hmm. about what's new. Mm -hmm. um, being fashionable, obviously, um, you know, be on the, on the, the Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. um, 
see what's out there, you know, read the magazines uh, and talk to your reps because we know what's out there. If you are trying to compete with the big box stores, it's not going to go well for you because you cannot. They have more buying power. They can be in the red forever. It's not going to hurt them. Yeah. So don't try to be the cheapest, but be the one who's different. Yeah. And people go to like, oh, I've never seen this before. Yeah. Uh, trunk shows, super fun. Yeah. Um, Done a couple. Yeah, yeah. If, you do, if you do it well, if you set it well, you know, make sure mm -hmm. that the doctors have full books. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, make sure that you advertise it widely, right. you know, flyers, uh, emails, uh, word of mouth. If you want to do a theme, it's fun, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but that is a really great way for your, your customers to see the entire line. Uh, it, it usually gets the employees pretty excited. Um, they usually get a good discount on their frames, mm -hmm. which is nice. Mm -hmm. And yeah, again, it's very important that your staff wears your frames. Yeah. Um, we all know the term Luxottica. We all know the term Essilor. And we are aware of the insurance company networks that control some of the frame companies and frame branding. Um, tell us a little bit about what independent means to you. Uh, as a frame company, independent means that you are not related to any insurance company, a uh, big box store, um, that you are truly on your own and your product is not sellable online. Uh, and you can check this out very quickly yourself, right? Um, because everybody says, oh, we don't sell online. Well, some of them do. <laughs> For customers to be able to go online and buy your frames. And sometimes, um, I don't mention any names, but sometimes <laughs> the customers can buy it cheaper online than they can buy it from you. Mm -hmm. And that's just, you know, don't work with these companies because you're yeah. feeling the hand that bites you. Yeah. Getting on that, it's kind of that same subject, um, touch on the, the kind of what you do, Clear Vision comes to mind, the one rep per company per multiple brands versus the 20 rep company where there's a rep for every brand. So I represent all the brands of Well and Ice and I'll be the one who comes to you for all those brands. Doesn't mean that you have to carry all those brands, but you're the only person you see. So if something goes wrong, I'm the only person you have to call. And I don't have to refer you, oh, actually, that's that's the, that's the rep down the street. I'll have her number. I think she's on vacation, but maybe, uh, no, it's, it's so much easier to have one rep. Also, then you have to see me, you know, every four months, mm -hmm. opposed to four different reps, then now you're seeing mm -hmm. one every month. Uh, that's a lot of time. It's a lot of time consuming. Um, you know, taking time out of your day and, and sitting with a rep. Um, so it's better just to do everything with one rep. All right. Um, does anything else come to mind that you would want to tell or talk with someone if I was a brand new optician, new store? Um, okay, so um, the, the only thing I've talked about is private labeling. Same thing with, with frames. You can get your own name on your on your frames, um, which are made by us. Mm -hmm. But your name on it, a great discount, and you can still sell them for, you know, prime yeah. prime morning, which is great. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, if you have a cool optical name, you go with that. Mm -hmm. If it's you know Dr. Johnson, yeah, you have to come up with a cooler, <laughs> with a cooler name like that. <laughs> But uh, private labeling is becoming more and more uh, popular for not just for eyewear, but for literally yeah. everything. Yeah. Differentiation, setting yourself apart, being different, not throwing that wide net, creating your niche market. That's what this is about. Imagine when you have a frame line that is specific to your store only. That's some pretty cool stuff. And it's not that hard to do and it doesn't drive up pricing or anything it just develops that relationship better their branding sub branding just makes it you know, better for them and for you as well one thing we wanted to wrap up with is kind of a role play session where what it would be like if you had an appointment at 12 o'clock with me and here it is at 12 o'clock hi i'm john i'm the new optician very nice, nice to, to meet, meet you, you john jackie uh, what do we got today? Okay, well, first of all, how, how long have you been here? Have you just started uh, here? Uh, what time is it? Yeah, <laughs> last week. Oh, wow. Uh, that's oh, it. wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll, go, brands, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you a highlight <laughs> okay. of each brand, and then um, we can see which one you want to dive in first. Okay. 
So this is our Dutch, which is obviously from the Netherlands. <laughs> yeah. uh, weather there is always miserable. It always rains there. <laughs> very gray, very rainy. So people kind of make up for that wearing very colorful yeah. accessories as well as eyewear. Acetate is from Italy. Uh, surgical stainless steel. So all the frames are um, hyperallergenic. Mm -hmm. So this is a nice mix of acetate. Um, we also have kids frames. Um, most of them are unisex and I really recommend you put them all together in one, in one spot. Okay. No minimum buying with this, which is nice. And they're all the same price point. Oh, all right. Yes, so that makes it very easy with like a, a trunk show. You uh, don't have to whisper at me right, every yeah, time. Yeah, How much yeah, is this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all the yeah. same price point. All right. And in this case, it's not unusual for a company to price point different frames. I mean, this every single tr piece in here could be a different price point depending on the company. You're saying these are all the same. Yes, they are. Okay, just wanted to clarify that. <laughs> all right. Okay. So that's the, how do you pronounce it? What's right? That's Dutch. Dutch. Just right. like the people. Dutch, just all just right. like you and me. All right. Yeah. Okay. This is a little bit mm. further south. This is from Germany, Ella and Max. Uh -huh. Same great material, so again, surgical stainless steel, Italian acetate. Uh, the color on top of it, the paint on top of it, we talked about it earlier, is the same. It's it's a burlock color from Switzerland. You don't have to remember all that. You have to remember that it's the same color um, mm -hmm. Apple uses on their products. Nice. Yeah. That's a pretty piece. Yeah. Um, is, it time, is it time to talk about pretty pieces? Is that all right? I think it's all right. Yeah. We started this entire conversation off with one thing in mind. You choose what's going to sell in your store, not what you happen to like. Okay. And there's those, those can be the same thing. If you found the perfect job in the perfect setting, it's your store. Well, then it's going to work out really, really well. If you're a 60 year old guy and you're putting in your last couple of years at the optician retail thing and you really don't care, any, you're not the guy to be choosing frames, okay? Um, if you love outrageous, crazy, over the top stuff, but your store is in a very conservative neighborhood, you're not the one who's going to be choosing the frames. So, right? Kind of? Yeah. Okay. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I think I mean, this is a gorgeous frame. I, I would think nothing about putting it on the board where I used to work. Now, would that work everywhere? Probably not. Right. So, um, beautiful. Very, very nice. Same price point as the, as LMA. the Dutch. Right. Um, same materials, just a different country of origin, different yeah. name. All right. So this is a, a new capsule collection, which oh. we just started this year. So you're one of the very first people to see this. This is made in France. Um, beautiful acetate. Mm -hmm. um, look at those hinges. Gorgeous. Yeah. This has been polished, which is rolled in a kind of a dryer situation, like a closed, mm -hmm. thin closed dryer with pieces of wood uh, and sand to get it as beautifully polished as they are. Mm -hmm. Very and nice. obviously, um, if it doesn't have the stamp, this is a stamp, actually. Okay. It looks like a sticker, but it's a stamp made in France. If mm -hmm. it doesn't have that stamp on it, it is not made in France. So no matter mm -hmm. what your other reps tell you, if it doesn't have the stamp, yeah. it's not made in France. Yeah, don't. It, yeah, I, that, that's pretty important, guys. It's, it's happened more than once in, in my time. The rep will come in and say, it's all handmade in Italy. And you get stuff in, you look at the stamp on every one of them stamp made in China. So. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yeah, kind of an ISO stamp sort of thing. Nice, nice to have. Yeah. And then this is also a higher, higher point collection. And this is the Reykjavik black label. So this is designed in Iceland. It is inspired as an Icelandic landscape. So Iceland, you know, a lot of volcanoes, a lot of uh, icebergs and stuff like that. So the POP even comes with like icebergs, volcano kind of display. Um, so beautiful rimless, beautiful mm -hmm. semi-rimless. Um, this is 100% titanium. They are literally in the, uh, indestructible. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Um, nice. And, you know, the rimless, you know, it's a rimless without having that old lady image, yeah. which makes it very, very nice. That is, that is yeah, this is for your patients who say, you know, I, I'm horrible on my glasses, <laughs> I, I break everything. Well, you won't break these. That is gorgeous. 
All right, if it is still the same 10 years later, if I was interested in, let's say, this frame um, to communicate to you that I was interested in getting it, I'm not technically buying it at this moment, I would flip it over in the tray. When you're done with this process, you may end up with 5, 10, 15 trays high in the sunglasses and you have to go back through and actually write up the order, key it in. That's how you know which ones you were interested in. Then you do your totals. Then we know that everything's in stock because you're putting it in the computer. And then you tell me how many pieces we bought. Do we need one more? Do we need one less? What return for that time is? It, um, you know, it, it takes a little time. You're probably looking 45 minutes per visit at least. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Least, yeah. 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 Especially when you're handling multiple lines and you have a good relationship. And hopefully they bring the donut. <laughs> uh, it's also nice if you have somebody else in the office, um, doesn't have to be, you know, could be receptionist, could be tech, doesn't matter. Have somebody else try them on as well, because otherwise you end up buying frames which look good on you, yeah. uh, but maybe not on everyone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, generally two, three people. I always found it like if somebody else usually gathers. Um, you can also sell out of bags. Um, not unusual at all to have oh, a customer... Yeah. Uh, you know, thinking they're getting the latest, newest, coolest, hippest thing. Uh, you know, it's not on your board even. I mean, they get excited as well. I think, oh, I'll take that. I've sold that at the trade numerous times. Oh, all the time. Uh, yeah, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. It's, uh, it's perfectly yeah. okay with me if you want to invite some of your fans yeah. of this particular line there to say, hey, the rep is coming this, this day. Brilliant. Um, yeah. Yep. You know, after we're done with our thing, usually a little bit later, come on in and, and uh, she can fit you and I can see the whole thing. Um, like a private appointment. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've had frame reps who just kind of butt in. Um, you know, you're, you're working with the customer and saying, well, they'd like this or that. And they say, well, you know, and they've got their this, bag. This color, yeah, yes, it's perfect. I, I got this. this yeah. Like, well, a good, sure. yeah, a good frame rep yes. will do that. And most frame reps, they've yeah. been on your side of the table yeah. before. So right, I'm going to buy this. This, this is... It's funny. My husband has the same frame. <laughs> <laughs> it must be the Dutch thing. So. Wow, yeah, right. and this one is an orange, so yeah, there you go. Thing. Wow. Yes, exactly. <laughs> nice. Any other advice, anything else you'd want to tell the newbie while they're going through this process? Um, have your, again, um, have your rep um, lead you. If you really like something and they're like, uh, not the best seller <laughs> or it's kind of a dog, you know, take their advice. Yeah. Unless you really, really like it. Um, and this is always a good idea to get more people involved. That's fine. I mean, I'm happy to have more people looking over your shoulder, um, giving advice or trying it on. This should be a fun thing. I was just going to say this that, should be that fun. very thing. Yes, yes. this should be yeah. fun. This should be exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah, it should be something you almost look forward to. Yes. I, I, you know, I mean, you know the rep is coming. You know you like their line. You may be wearing their line. It sells well, hence it makes you and or your employer money and gives you a paycheck at the end of the month. Um, so this should be enjoyable. Uh, all right. Do Thank more. you so much for stopping by. This was amazing. Um, absolutely perfect. It just worked out so well in, in every possible way, um, except it's getting a little hot here in the studio in South Carolina in the afternoon. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you are watching us on YouTube, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there in the corner. If you're watching us on Facebook, please give us a like, leave us a comment, and make absolutely certain that every lens that you're putting in whatever beautiful frame you choose comes from Laramie K.